Hi folks, how you doing? It's James JT at the Movies and I'm back with you for another episode of Debriefing 007. Now yes, my series reviewing all the officially on films has come to a close, but there are still some interesting stories from the world of James Bond that I'd like to share with you in the film series' 60th anniversary year. Regular viewers on my channel will know that this isn't normally the sort of video I'd make and that I normally appear on camera, but for this I wanted to try something a little bit different and see if I could lend myself to a voiceover while showing you relevant clips on the screen. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below whether or not this is something that works or not. But enough of all that, let's take a look at Honor Majesty's Secret Service, the ABC Cut. So I hear you asking, what is the ABC Cut? And is there an alternate cut of Honor Majesty's Secret Service? I thought that the cuts that we had on DVD, video, Blu-ray, 4K were the only ones that were available. Well, you would be right in thinking that. However, back in the early 1970s, the network ABC acquired the American broadcast rights to the James Bond films. They started initially with the film that is widely considered by Bond fans to be the best of the series. Not necessarily an opinion I share, but it does seem to be the consensus across the board. And they aired Goldfinger for the first time on television in 1972. The ABC version of Goldfinger was slightly edited. It removed the gun barrel sequence, it removed Odd Jobs Death, and it removed also some of the more adult scenes uh, between Bond and his leading ladies. In the following years, From Russia With Love, Thunderball and Doctor No were also aired with similar cuts being made. In 1975, You Only Live Twice was shown, with the beginning of the movie needlessly edited. It started coming out of the gun barrel with the space capsule scene that we all know, but then after a mere 18 seconds, cuts to the scene of Bond lying apparently dead in his bed in Hong Kong. It then faded into the Nancy Sinatra title sequence. I'm sure that at the time this left audiences confused and took them a while to play catch up once the film got going after the title sequence. In 1975 they also aired Diamonds Are Forever where similar cuts were made to the previous Bond films released. They also removed any hint of a relationship between Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd. Then in 1976, the, the ABC cut of Honor Majesty's Secret Service was aired. By then, as I mentioned, they'd shown all the Sean Connery James Bond films, and all that was left to show now was the odd film out in the series starring the other fella that sadly not many people remembered. The studio realised this and realised that Lazenby wasn't going to be an active selling point for their adverts and their promos when they were releasing Honor Majesty's Secret Service for the TV debut, and they even went so far as to not mention George Lazenby at all in any of their adverts. They said that it was a James Bond movie starring Diana Rigg and Telly Savalas. It's also interesting to note that they aired this film in February of 1976, February being one of the sweeps months for ratings, and that meant that debuting a new James Bond adventure would likely give the ABC network stronger ratings than some of their competitors. And as well as this, all the skiing, the bobsledding, the winter sports shown in the film could also be used to help promote the Winter Olympics. I read that online and found that to be really fascinating and quite a, quite a clever piece of, uh, of promotion on the network's part. The problem that the network faced was how do they squeeze a 140 minute movie into a two hour time slot where they've also got to account for just over 30 minutes worth of adverts. They decided that what they'd do is split it into two 90 minute parts and that then would give them a monopoly over two Monday nights in the February sweeps in a time where normally it would be dominated by one of the competing networks. I've not been able to find any sort of official blurb and so far as I'm aware there's never been one released as to why they re-edited the movie in the way that we're going to discuss in just a moment's time. Though from what I've read online and what I've researched, it's theorised in the Bond community that because the first half of Honor Majesty's Secret Service is a little bit slower building the ground of the story, that it might not play well if it was cut into two parts. If you can imagine Honor Majesty's Secret Service as it is, if you cut it into two parts, the first half of the movie wouldn't really resolve anything or have any sort of natural climax. So I can kind of understand why they did this. The network were rightly worried that if people didn't enjoy or stay tuned for part one, then they wouldn't come back the following week for, for act two. Let's dive in now to what they changed. So the film opens, as most Bond films do, with the classic gun barrel sequence designed by Maurice Binder, but that sequence then dissolves into Bond's escape from Piz Gloria, which Bond fans will know is originally about halfway through the film. The scene is now accompanied by a narration from James Bond, 
providing exposition so that the new running order that they've come up with for the film can make sense. Now like me, I bet you're thinking, wow, they got George Lazenby back in for some voiceover work. But sadly they didn't. No, that'd be, that'd be too good to be true. The narration is actually provided by Alexander Scowby, who had previously narrated The Incredible World of James Bond. The narration was recorded and mixed into the original soundtrack, which wasn't something regularly done back in 1976. Let's take a look at a couple of clips. Bond. James Bond here, Agent 007 on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now who'd he say it? The England is up behind. The soap might be rated as excellent if it weren't so crowded. Those gentlemen in orange represent Spectre, headed by my arch enemy, and Stavro Blofeld. Midnight trussing down one of the major Swiss Alps is not my favorite sport, but tonight it's important that I contact M, my chief in London. You see, I've just learned that Herr Blofeld has a new plan to dominate the world. As you can see there with that first clip, it's what I was telling you about Bond escaping Piss Gloria straight out of the gun barrel sequence. It then links into the scene down at the ice rink in the town where Bond is able to meet up with Tracy. Right now, Her Majesty's Secret Service needs help. And suddenly it appears in the lovely form of the last person I want to involve in this rather desperate situation. James. The Contessa Teresa di Vincenzo. Tracy, as she prefers to be called. Darling, you're in trouble. What is it? There's people after me. Can I help? Have you got a car? The scenes with Bond and Tracy escaping Blofeld's goons then bleed into the original pre-credit sequence, with Bond again providing some more narration. And the classic, this never happened to the other fella line. The available clips that we have to watch sadly end here, but there are some other scenes that had voiceovers and things cut about, and I'll just give you a little bit of info about them now. There was a voiceover about Bond meeting Draco, and the film also kept cutting back to the escape from his Gloria, which, like I said before, I can imagine is to keep the pace up during the, the first part of the film. When they aired the second part, I believe there was some further narration in places where they felt it was needed, as well as a what-you-missed-last-time sort of catch-up at the, at the start of the film. If you wanted to read through some of the voiceovers yourself, sadly there's not recordings available as so far as I've been able to find anyway, apart from what I've shown you in this video. You can, with a quick Google search, find articles about this and you'll be able to read through them yourself. I won't go through them all, I'll let you search for them if you're interested. I will, however, quickly mention just the one. The voiceover goes on to say, I wondered how James Bond was going to get out when my captors and I arrived at our destination, a rather ominous looking construction warehouse. And I only wanted to briefly mention that one because it stood out to me when I was reading through them myself. Because I thought it was odd that Bond would talk about himself in the third person. So this version of the film will be shown again until the, the 1980s, which is crazy to think that they continue to show it like this for, you know, several years. It, it baffles me. Uh, but in the 1980s, they decided that they would make a cut that was much more faithful to the original theatrical film that we all have on our Blu-rays and DVDs. And the only things that were slightly trimmed were some of the sex scenes and some of the more violent scenes so that it could be aired and meet the TV broadcasting standards. So there we are, folks. That's just a little recap video on arguably one of the most bizarre moments in 007's history. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video uh, and my foray back into the world of 007 on this channel as well. Like I say, it's the 60th anniversary year of the James Bond movies this year, and whilst the debriefing 007 series is largely finished, I think there are a couple more stories to tell. So if you're interested in watching them, I'm certainly happy to bring them to you. Please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, and please let me know what your thoughts were on this video down in the comments below i always love to read them and i love to chat to you guys in the comments it really is great if you're new to my channel hello there nice to meet you please think about subscribing so that we can meet again in future videos i would love to keep you around as it'd be great to get to know you all better in future videos and of course it helps my channel to grow as well thank you very much for watching and above all else as i'll always say take care of yourselves and i look forward to seeing you again next time for more cheers